It's finally New Year's Eve, and we can finally end this horrible 2017 with another episode of 12 Integrals. Now, as a little heads up, the next three episodes of 12 Integrals will involve a bit of geometry in all of them. So I'm hoping you're ready for it. And the question today isn't actually too hard to understand. You know the area of the circle, right? The equation of the area of the circle is pi r squared. So all I want you to do is using integration to prove that the area of the circle is actually pi r squared. And again, I'll leave you to try to think about it. Obviously, you can pause the video if you need a bit more time, because in just a moment, I am going to reveal the answer to you. Now, the most common way that people will probably try to do this question is by realizing that the equation of the circle can be written down as y equals to the square root of r squared minus x squared, where r is the radius of the circle you're concerned with. And all you do is you integrate this function from minus r to r, and then whatever that comes out to, you multiply by 2, and you will in fact get pi r squared. But then if you do this method, you'll realize that you eventually have to do some sort of trig substitution, and the whole integral just gets into a massive mess. And so really, doing it this way is probably not the best way you could be proving the area of the circle because it's actually rather complicated. Now before I even try to find the area of the circle, it's probably worth mentioning and talking about what integrals actually are and how they're related to finding the area underneath the curve. Now one way that you could define the integral is by an idea called the Riemann sum. The Riemann sum is when you take a graph and then you divide the area underneath that graph into smaller rectangles and then finding the area of those individual rectangles and then adding them all up. And then as your rectangle gets thinner and thinner you get closer and closer to the actual area underneath the graph and that's what integration is, doing the Riemann sum for really really thin rectangles. If you're really curious about this you can check the video from last year's series of 12 days of Christmas where I actually talked about integration and differentiation in one of the videos. But one problem with trying to use rectangles to fit under the graph of a circle is that you know the shapes are just a bit different. One's a rectangle and one's a circle and if you try to fit something that's not so round into something that's a bit round there's going to be a little bit of trickiness in it that you have to deal with. And so maybe rather than doing the integration as we would normally would by breaking up the area underneath the circle into smaller rectangles maybe there is another shape where we can break up the areas of the circle into so that we make our integration and also our lives a lot easier. And now I'm going to present to you two methods that you could do and that depends on whether you like pizza more or you like onions more. And in case you haven't guessed already, we're either going to be splitting the circles down into small slices or splitting the circle into small layers like an onion. Now in this video I'll only be showing you the proof for the second method. If you want to know how we can work out the area of the circle using the pizza method I'll link you to a different video where I'll walk you through it. So what we do now is we try to divide the circle up into layers like this. And so what we need to do is we need to work out the area of each of the individual layers and then we could add them all up and then we get the area of the circle. So let's take out one layer of the onion or the circle and find its area. Well, what we could do is we could take that layer of the circle and we can instead lay it out as a rectangle like this. Now, of course, true, it won't be a perfect rectangle. One of the sides will be longer than the other side. Now, if we say that this radius is r and this radius is r plus delta r, then these two sides will be slightly different. But because we want these layers to be really, really thin, we want the thickness of these layers to be almost zero. So we want delta r to be really, really small and really, really small compared to the values of r. And so this side here, 2 pi r times delta r, is almost the same as 2 pi r, where we ignore the delta r. Hence, we can approximate these rectangles to just be, well, rectangles. And of course, the thickness of these rectangular strips will be delta r. And so the areas of the individual strips will be 2 pi r 
delta r. And of course, we want to do this for the entire circle. So we're going to sum this over all of the little areas that we divide up in the circle. Now, to get an even more accurate answer, we want delta r to be really, really small and approaching zero. And when delta r becomes really, really small, the number of layers that we have to add up goes higher and higher. And as delta r approaches zero, the number of layers that we have will approach infinity. And when you do a sum over an infinite amount, that is an integral. And as you can see here, the delta r changes into a dr to represent a really, really tiny thickness. Now, of course, we also need the limit of integration. The smallest layer will have the r equal to zero which has no radius at all. And the largest layer will be when r equals to, well, the radius of the circle, or just r. And so we need to integrate from zero to r. And this is a really simple integral, which I won't even show you how to do, but you could show and you can verify that it does indeed equal to pi r squared. And that is one way that you can work out the areas of the circle without having to deal with complicated integrals or you know trig substitution or all that mess just by dividing up the circle into a different shape and thinking about your integrals in a different way. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in 2018.